Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, talk. They can hear you. Okay. Good morning, Dream Rising. Today we're going to be talking about spirituality. Spirituality is like, what? Stop, stop the stuff that you're doing. And then, like, once you're in that personality, you need to, like, like, that you need to know like you know like how I do like my life and then so it's like I was so, so this is what you do so if you was at your house chilling and then if somebody wants to like say stop get on your computer and play I'm like you say no and then that makes you like your personality. And then it could be person to person. Very personal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So spirituality. Now, please, we can't hear so it basically over. spirituality is your personal process to learn why your personality is the way that it is. Makes sense to me. Uh, yep. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that a lot. We appreciate that a lot. And then, that, and then, once you like buy, like, that's a lesson right there that your children really listen like, to the things that you say for real. Don't they? Uh, somebody heard it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then like one, and then once you once you buy a car for somebody, they only like, oh my god, da da da, da da da, and then like your spirituality means something. What does it mean? It means that you have to like take care of your spirituality, and then meditate every day to to, to get your third eye out. Ashe. 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 Make sure you do your office every day. Every day. Out of prime and yoga. Ashe. These boys woke as hell. <laughs> I promise you, I don't be telling them none of this stuff. <laughs> That's how they feel. <laughs> and then once you, like, do, once you get your truck, Okay, okay. Okay, you have to take it to a whole nother level, y'all. Y'all be talking about y'all diets. Man. Okay, now. Man. About your spell out your spirituality. Okay. Because it's like I wonder, I wonder what y'all dad is like for y'all to be like how y'all is. I was gonna let him meet y'all dad one day. Right? He must be real interested like, the way right? that y'all like, talk. You know, like, you know how the goal is meditation. Uh huh. And then, and once, you, once you're done, uh -huh. your third eye pops right out. I shake. They don't know about that. Nobody talks about that, do they? No. Why don't they talk about that? Wouldn't you want your third eye to just pop out? Like, pop, pop. I want my third eye to pop out. I don't know about nobody else. Shit. Pop. Mm -hmm. What did you put this on here? Okay. But... But we doing this live specifically for mommy, okay, Azor? We appreciate your opening. You know, we gonna get better on the routine. You gonna be my opening act, you feel me? Uh, we gonna work on that. But generally, you got your points. You made your points. You actually kind of raised the vibrations of this yep. car. So we appreciate yep. you. And um, we gonna talk about what we were talking about earlier that I guess 
fucking you or Instagram was like, um, nah, but you didn't say take two. <laughs> and it's like, damn, generally we'll be like, damn, oh well. But now we like, no, nah, we got to come back again because it was a very important conversation, very enlightening to me. But for real, for real, if I'm talking about it, it don't fucking matter. I think more or less, I want to, I want you to talk about it and kind of allow me to listen and ask questions if you need. But generally, just because I feel like, can we say a vast majority of women go through this? Yes. And can we also say that a vast majority of women don't talk about it in a close circles and small circles and large circles and circles in general because mental health is generally shamed or having a lack of mental health but generally i feel like all of us especially going into 2020 2021 we all suffer from some form of ptsd Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so generally i just use that as a mental health concern but this is probably different from ptsd but it's never talked about. We want to talk about PTSD. We want to talk about ADHD and all these other things. But I don't feel like this is talked about. But I think it needs to be talked about by somebody who can actually aid in the healing of it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But also experience it. I find them as the best healers. Because you can say, okay, I experienced this. And this is how I got out of it. As opposed to somebody said, I read this book. And I got this degree, and this is how you get out of it. It's going to be harder. So I just generally want you to talk about whatever you want to talk about, whatever spirit leads you to share, and I'm going to just listen. Well, two things. Because one, it's kind of like a, we're experiencing it together. Mm-hmm. And there's two sides. There's a side of the one going through it mm-hmm. and the the actual going through it and then the one that's going through it who's the support which would be you right um so and when i say going through it we're talking about postpartum depression um postpartum obsessive compulsive disorder postpartum psychosis Mm -hmm. i'm not saying that is what i have Mm -hmm. um that is something that like I know that is what's going on don't know which one don't know if I want to label that but uh-huh. it is real uh, and some people might have it one stream to the next yep yep and it can go you can go to the extreme for postpartum psychosis mm-hmm. you can go to the extreme as halluc- hallucinations and uh, illusions mm-hmm. and or I think or the delusions in the head. Mm-hmm. Uh, delusions in the head. Delu- yeah. Um, you mind if I ask you a question? Uh-huh. So, in this particular space, do you think that a psychic or an astrologer or a reader will be able to help a person truly? And let me finish with postpartum or the the other types of symptoms in a space that you're not correctly identifying it first. I'm not saying that a reader or astrologer or a psychic is bad. I'm yeah. saying I'm struggling through postpartum, but I ain't identify it, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. But uh-huh. I'm going to this particular spiritual person to help me through something real. My opinion is that's like having a broken leg and going to the dentist yeah, you feel me yeah, yeah. not to say that the dentist is bad but they just can't help They're you with needed. a broken uh-huh, leg uh-huh. people because people postpartum is not um something that people look for mm-hmm. it goes ignored and it's not something that people acknowledge so it goes ignored um and it goes ignored because people feel shameful about it. People are embarrassed. And like you told me today, there's nothing to be embarrassed about because it's something that you cannot help when it happens. Mm-hmm. Um, you told me today it's not how you, um, it's how you react. Mm-hmm. How you respond how to How you it. respond to things. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, you've gone through your darkest hour and now what are you going to do about it? 
it's like you can't pretend that everything is all good because it's far from that mm -hmm. but it is getting better right um, and generally that's going to always be the vibes correct 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 um, like you said earlier just do something mm -hmm. something's better than nothing mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and Professing to be spiritual beings, we generally should rely on spiritual energy and spiritual um, tactics in those situations. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think one of the things about partnership is that, like, say, for instance, if I'm struggling, like, remember, I was going through something. I don't know what I was going through, but I was like going to sleep kind of angry and you and you burnt herbs mm -hmm, mm -hmm, while I was mm -hmm. sleeping and I just mm -hmm. felt better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like when I'm down, you my spirit, right? Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when you down, you don't give a fuck about that shit. Fuck that herb, fuck that candle, fuck all that shit, right? This is the partner, this is the, the power of like spiritual partnership is because I can hold all of the spiritual space in the world people if i was to be like man i'm having a tough time motherfuckers be like ain't you the hood mystic well, how you having a tough or time your day gets better. or yeah i'll pray for you Nate. like you know you gonna crack open the herb like the candle put the oil down and that's different bro than like i don't know well wishing but generally i just feel like the spiritual component is a major aspect to it within your relationship, which I feel like pregnancies and relationships is such a big deal mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to me. Mm -hmm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or even commute, mm -hmm. maybe just community and just what you're doing as far as like being that particular coach. Can you talk about that or like, what do you mean? Like helping other women get through this actual process that may be going through it, that have no support, nobody to hold their hand. Like, look, what you feel is real. And yeah, um, I don't know. It's just really just holding the space because. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it all depends. Some people may need to be hospitalized because of it. Some people may, may need mm. to have different things happen because it, de it literally depends on the extreme of it. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that I can do is already hold the space and reassure, reassure them um, that it's not true. But it's like, in that case too, I would still have to work with whoever their support system is. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, if they don't have anybody, then that's kind of like a scary thing because you can get to a really, really dark place. Like I was saying, it really um, everyone with kids, exactly, you. exactly, and everyone um, their darkness and their extreme will be different. Um, so it's like all I can say is for every like people who listen to this, all you can do is just be a support person. Uh, and if you don't know how, like ask us. Like we can give you some tips and tricks that we know. Um, we're not experts. Mm -hmm. But we're um, we really care that you have support in your darkest times, yep, yep. and generally we not fucking able to heal you. But we can hold the space as you learn to heal yourself, as you learn to actually recover some of your senses. Like it's so many different things that come to mind that I feel like energetically charged to do. <clears throat> Or like so many different situations where I feel like as a community, we have failed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and identifying a problem that exists in a lot of our women where we say we love black women, right? We, we want to do all of these things for black women and things of that nature until they exhibit certain characteristics. And now all of a sudden, you know, excuse my language, but you're a crazy bitch, right? Yep. You know? How many times, now let's be real, she fine, but she crazy. How many times have you heard that? You've heard that a lot. She kind of crazy. I mean, once again, you ain't never felt the shame of like having a leg broke or something like, you know, and this kind of where we deal with mental health where it's just as serious as our physical health, but generally it's so much shame around the cure 
so much shame in the prognosis that we can't even move in the direction to healing. We continuously move away from healing by identifying that I don't know what happens. Is there a clear cut? Like, I guess in reference in the goddess, because generally as I'm doing my studies and they talk about how like sexual lubrication, doctors don't know what the fuck that is, honestly. They can't specifically say, damn, you got that sticky icky and all of that. Or, dang, you got that gusher and all of that. Like, they just be like, it, it, this is beyond our scope of understanding. I think generally when you reference postpartum in the many ways that it shows up, that it might be a spiritual process in coming into the goddess. This is what I personally feel, but I don't personally know. But I do feel like it's a spiritual component that is completely understanding your feminine energy yes. and how it works yes. and how it relates to your children, your yeah, husband, and your home. But you don't actually have to do much about it. It's more like a... Yeah. But then, say, for instance, if you don't deal with that aspect, but you do have the components, like, say, for instance, like... Yo, diet is single woman diet, right? But you really got children and a husband. Then, if you feel inadequate, it's not to say that you truly are inadequate. It's just more or less like your spiritual diet, meaning the people that you talk to, the guidance that you receive, the education that you really hold on to. It's just not there. Mm -hmm. But the just from identify it you we sat and identified talked about it you instantly found the resource mm -hmm. because you actually had the mindset to look for a resource mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you don't actually identify the problem you won't be able to even begin to mm -hmm. look for the resource or, or even realize that there is a problem yeah um, it's like a lot of people are just like well i'm just angry or, right or he just triggers me or right. he just triggers me right he just trigger me Thanks. and that just triggers me no it's triggering you for a reason and it shouldn't go ignored. It's like, it's not an okay behavior, but it's okay because you're going to get through it, if that makes sense. It make me think about Callie. You know how Callie got that evil type of energy uh -huh. attached uh -huh. to her, uh -huh. but they call her like the great goddess and all of that, mm -hmm. mother goddess and that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just that wrathfulness and it's just like, Whatever it is, it don't make me forsake the goddess or whatever. So generally, when you understand it and you behold it, you then understand like you're in the presence of a goddess. And generally within that, the goddess is giving you a lot of gifts, a lot of prosperity, a lot of ease in your life. But then again, it don't want to be ignored either. Mm -hmm. Generally, if I, we was in a relationship and you know m my name Kyrie and I just ignored you for fucking how how long you've been fucking ignoring the goddess like save me and you in the relationship right yeah. and you just ignore me for three months you don't think i'd be pissed but no i really do really love you fuck with you ain't cheated on you you know what i'm saying i'm just in the car with you all the time right yep. just yep. talking about your womb yep. your womb present right now yep. and it's like are you sending your womb positive love energy are you really tapping into your goddess energy or are you just completely ignoring it mm -hmm. And then coming back to it like, well, shit. That's kind of how it read to me. I know it's different, like from a like a technical aspect. I think, yeah, from a spiritual aspect, you know, when they say that goddess can be wrathful yep. and shit like that. And then when you relate it, if no, no, fuck me. Say if I just ignored you for three months, you wouldn't be mad. Um, if I just code ignored you, like for no reason. After a certain point, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, you would catch something. Like, you would just be like, well, damn. Like, nigga, I ain't dead or hurt or nothing. I'm just, uh -huh. you might see me from time to time or need me for something. I might need you and just be like, yo, let me get that. Take it and just leave. You know what I'm saying? That's how motherfuckers deal with the goddess. Oh, let me get this pussy together for this big end. Let me tap into my goddamn Pombajira. Okay, pussy power, boom. You know what I'm saying? Then it's just like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like when you, only when you need something. 
only when you need something and then having to deal with it. Point. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then, I mean, I guess we just need to really, I personally think going into 2021, 2022, most definitely, we got to be OD with our goddess shit. Like, we got to set up the crib, goddess, 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 goddess. Like, I just don't feel like that aspect should be forsaken or forgotten. And generally, when we imagine our emotions, and if they say for our emotions is good, then we must be appeasing the goddess, whether through offerings and things of that nature, through herbs and incense, or say for us our emotions is off, then we probably not doing no fucking goddess work for real. It just depends. Maybe we do goddess work and we still pissed off. Then we be like, well, we'll come back to this theory. Like, our YouTube or Instagram, remember when we said the goddess work make you happy? Um, we did goddess work and we was pissed off. So we're going to scratch that idea. We're going to come with something else. But I know, like, actually going within my heart yesterday, actually seeking a resolution, I went, like, to the herbs. And you know how usually I'm like, all right, wormwood, mugwort, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm going straight for the harshness, resins even, you know what I'm saying? Spirit was like, no, I just get flowers, all flowers. And I'm like, okay. So I gathered the flowers and I got four flowers. It's like four levels of the goddess. And when I blended them flowers together, it was like the sweetest perfume I ever smelt in my life. And I was like, okay. And then the channel was like, something is better than nothing. And I said, okay. Because I know I wasn't necessarily, I'd be lazy as fuck for real. I'd be like, oh, babe, we're going to do a vision quest. I'm tired, babe. You know, let's do it tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like that type of energy. And it's just like shit. Lazy. Like, you know, in the space of trying to be a better person, laziness just ain't going to cut it, honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the sense of trying to get further. Yeah. Like with me, it's not going to cut it. Like feeling better and just all around being better. Mm -hmm. we, can't, we can't be lazy. How do you, how does like spiritual, for you and your explanation in the bottom of your heart how does being active in your spiritual process look like and like if you ever done it before what benefits did you get from it um steaming and teas um definitely the smudging mm -hmm. but i think like on top of all of that would be like drawing painting Mm. Uh, that would be your real bag. So crazy. why don't why do you do that the less? Uh, when that's your baggiest bag of all the bags. To be honest, I don't know. See I what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I can't even make that I don't have to answer that. Music is my absolute favorite thing in the whole world, uh -huh. but it's the shit that I do that absolute less. I'll be doing everything else and be like, all right, I'll get to music after I do everything else. But it's always shit to do. So it's just like got to figure out time to do your back giddy back 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 shit yeah. as opposed to just doing a whole bunch of shit that you feel like you need to do but might not it's just not always your back it ain't going nowhere right that's the thing it ain't going nowhere and if i could take an hour we could take an hour out the day to mm -hmm. work on our creativity yep like just be creative as parents like be as creative as human beings at the end of the day yep because that will help with our mental health. I know, I know it will. And then too, it's like you know when you when you're creative, things just start flowing. Facts. And when you're not creative, you start getting into head spaces, bro. Like you just. Uh, like, <laughs> uh -huh. So that's like one thing that I would say to anyone who's going to any going through any kind of postpartum anything. Be creative as possible. Get a coloring book. Knitting, sewing, crocheting, painting, drawing, doing nails, hair, whatever your creativeness, baking, cooking. It's like you can't say there's nothing. There's always something that you are you kind of got a knack for. Mm -hmm. You just got to do it. But the one thing that I've realized in all of this is that you plant the seed of I can't do it. And it just, that seed is very, 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 very quickest weeds that grow mm -hmm. is that oh, what you can't do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then sometimes
sometimes you don't even know that you're saying it to yourself. That's yep. how fucking yep. deep that shit is yep. in your mind. Oh, I can't do that. Hey, man. You ain't even try it. And then you might be fucking right, but not really right. Like, you saying you can't do it is the reason why you saying you can't do it. Your ability to say you can do it. Uh-huh. So sometimes, like, I'll just make sure, like, I'll just ask. So, identifying the problem, how do you, so my kid is five years old, so that don't, so that means that I don't have postpartum then because my kid is five, or I got two kids and they both grown, so that mean I don't have postpartum, does that mean that? Uh, no, I think it means that you always had it and certain things are bringing it back to the surface because you didn't deal with it then. Mm-hmm. Um, and it might not necessarily be postpartum, mm-hmm. um, but it's definitely closer related. Mm-hmm. But I can say this, that postpartum does not have a time limit of mm-hmm. when, how long it's supposed to be and when it catches on. Uh, from like what I hear from a lot of, a lot of mothers that within the first two years mm-hmm. is when you can normally see it um, and within the first six months um, up to like it start within the first six months mm-hmm. so it can and it can last two days a week it can last a year two years ten years mm-hmm. does it go and come back or is it just like one shot deal no i feel like it stays and then it grows but people learn to deal and cope, cope with it. What does that look it? like? Coping with it. Yeah, coping with Becoming a, a situation. Yeah, I don't, I don't like know. you just lock yourself know. out. It's like I honestly don't know what coping with it feels like because of how dark I can get. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I get too dark to be able to cope with it. Okay. Like, I have in oil. I guess I can say this. For me to cope with it, I have to talk about it. Uh-huh. And I have to say it. Uh-huh. Uh, talk about what I'm experiencing and what I'm thinking. Uh-huh. Uh, Even if it's dark. Yeah. And so I guess, and, but that, I'm not saying, I don't feel like that's coping with it. I think coping with it is not saying anything. Uh-huh. Not addressing it. It's like, I talked about it, and then I also have been doing research about it. And mm-hmm. figuring out ways that I can overcome this and with with my beliefs and what I know mm-hmm. instead of going to a therapist or a psychologist and being put on medicine mm-hmm. or um, talking to someone who just understands the textbook definition uh huh but it, you're probably talking to a dude you know about I, your honestly, <laughs> I honestly couldn't tell you I honestly couldn't tell you <laughs> no but okay but yeah, but what's the working. problem what's the problem with the medicine and just your personal opinion. Um, Not like it's right or wrong, just in your personal. I believe that it's synthetic, so uh-huh. it'll probably cause more problems than fixing problems. Uh-huh. Um, so, and I feel like that every drug out there has a, a natural um, root. It's based off a plant or yeah. something to that effect. Yeah, it's based off something from outside of nature. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, Finding that correspondence might be your best yep. natural route. Yep, and then that's what's best for me. Not everyone. Uh-huh. Some people. People might need, like the pills. Yeah, some people might. Them. Some people might need it for uh-huh. a week or two or uh-huh. three. Because you um, don't. Because like you said, it could be more severe. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. other people like the yep. it could be like completely hallucinogenic in the space yep. where you like. You tell me that story things. that you were saying about the lady. So I was reading an article. Um, this lady. And this was maybe about 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, not when people didn't, we don't, didn't know too much about postpartum. We don't really know too much more now, but there's more resources. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was, the last thing she remembers was being surrounded uh, by snipers and helicopters on her roof and um, thinking the police was coming for her. Mm-hmm. She knows she committed some sort of crime. Mm-hmm. Um, and then oh, I forgot this part. They arrest she in her mind. They arrested the nanny, mm-hmm. and so she tells her husband. This is how she tells her husband. 
that the nanny didn't do it. She did it. Mm -hmm. And so he, in her mind, she he's going to turn her in. But in actuality, the husband is taking her to a mental institution. Mm -hmm. um, because she is hallucinating all these things. Like none of the stuff that she is in her mind is happening actually happened. Mm. Uh, so it can be really sad. And how long did this go on? It didn't went on for about ten years because she like each ho she was hospitalized like three or four times before they realized that it was linked to postpartum. And so once and they, they linked it to postpartum she was able to recognize it and right. start Right. And they what it's called, and that's called postpartum psychosis, mm -hmm. um, is when you start having halluc uh, hallucinations and uh, literally the reality that you are physically in is not the reality that you think you are living. Mm -hmm. You're completely off the spectrum. Um, so the reason that people don't talk about this, the reason that people don't seek healing for this is because they're basically shame at the end of the day. Yeah, and they're made to think and feel like they're crazy. Uh -huh. She was talking about that she was in there with people who were barking on all fours, mm -hmm. half dressed, running mm -hmm. around the hall screaming, mm -hmm. and she just wanted to breastfeed her child. Mm -hmm. uh, like when she snapped out of it. Mm -hmm. Like when she snapped out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Damn. Mm -hmm. And she didn't even realize it was just happening what, what, for what so was, long. Yep. Yep. Damn. And that's like really a scary thing. It's like, it's scary having these thoughts and it's scary not knowing exactly what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and it's scary not knowing if you can say something to anyone. Mm -hmm. Give that to your brother, please, because he'll, he's going to go to sleep in a second. Not knowing if you can say anyone and not knowing how they're going to take it. Because mm -hmm. um, that's the last thing you want to hear is like, you're crazy or you need to be hospitalized mm -hmm. or there ain't nothing wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. Can you also say that there is no right way to actually deal with it at no. the end of the day? No, I think because everybody to. is different and yeah. how they are triggered and how they're wired. Yep, and that's what makes it another yep. hard nut to crack. Yep, it's like you def there are definitely triggers. Mm -hmm. um, a tr your trigger can be your child crying, your husband touching you, wife touching you, your child touching you, um, not being able to bathe how you want to bathe or have your hair done the way you want it done or dress how you want to dress or what eat how you want to eat whatever what about like weight gain and things like yep. that how you're not happy with how you look in the mirror how your clothes are fitting a lot of different things and then too with everyone being stuck in the house this past year mm -hmm. it's like that definitely um is adding what's up is um, yeah we go home in a second um that definitely adds to it so it's like somebody right now can be sitting in their house mm -hmm. living in a whole completely altered reality and not have nobody to, to snap them out of it hold them and they have children. hold that space Woo! and ain't nobody knocking on your fucking door to check on you at the end of the day because it's covid damn and probably your oldest child is taking care of their young the kids. whole thing going shopping and everything mm -hmm. and you probably have friends who I've been texting you and y'all been ha ha he he but don't really know how you living. Whoa. Whoa. Cause it's real out here. You know I be asking people, man, how you doing? And they just be like, I'm fine. Do you know just you know? Uh-huh. And half the time they don't really This know. my shit. All the girls. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can paint a real pretty, real pretty picture. You can you can paint on a real, real good smile. Two times of being up that track when I ain't no holler back, girl. Man, oh man, huh? I said I don't know if everybody said it there. I can't see. Oh, um, cause I can't see it either. Oh yeah, it's a lot of people. Oh shit, <laughs> it just went down here. Um. But for some reason, the skin, the the fucking the phone got a um a glare like a, a glare, super glare. I don't even know why. But I'ma um turn around real quick. No. All this, cause do you see all this snow? Yeah. Seven. 
No, not today, baby. Not today. We gotta wait for the great melt. We gotta wait for the great melt, fam. Once, Once it melts, then yes. We Once can. the melt happens, we out here like swimwear. You know, we hit in every playground in the in the in the whole Midwest. We about to be playground legends like Pee Wee Kirkland out here, nigga. They ain't gonna know what hit them, boy. We gonna be hitting this playground, that playground. That swing set. You heard about the new swing set with the goddamn digital eye swings? We gonna be going crazy. Uh, the mug, the mug work. You, we can. We smoked and we also do a tea. Um, mug work and yeah, steams. On. Mug work and um, foot soak. Mug work and baths. Uh, mug work is amazing. We even make love and mug work. <laughs> no. I mean, it probably stimulates a vibe at the end of the day. Cause what, we, the mugwort? Yeah, burning mugwort as an instant at night. Uh-huh. I mean, it gets me horny, but I digress. <laughs> oh, Lord. Sorry, I'm just uh, seeing if there was looking at the comments. But yeah, postpartum is real, and people can act like it's not people or whatever, but it is. Um, it is real. I say to all the gods and goddesses out there. Um, please get in the car. Please get in the car. Thank you very much. The reality of a solution is very real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You generally got to have a person in your corner, though. That's what I be saying, man. Mm -hmm. And you can't be like... Trying to force a solution on them because they are not going to be able to see it at that moment. You Like... You just know, hold the space and know that there's a solution. It's like, that's what I really appreciate and thank you for. Is just holding the space for that. See boats. Yeah, I can't really. That's the problem. When you got down spiritual miracle extraordinaire. You out here healing folks, touching people, healing people. People will be like, oh, you helped me so much. You start to believe your own shit. You know what I'm saying? You start be like, oh, I got these positive reviews and shit, nigga. You see the reviews. I got five-star reviews. Can't really tell me shit. And you think you're supposed to actually hold that space. But then at the end of the day, what you also realize is that you can't do it. So the best thing that happens when your partner is going through anything is that you stay balanced. That's when you tune in to your higher self, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I did. I really said, you know what? All I can do in this particular moment is stay balanced, tune in to my higher self, do the next best thing. Don't panic. Don't trip. Don't flip. Don't give advice. Just come from the heart. And that's really all I did. I ain't have no fucking script. But sometimes when I realize it, it's like shit. I don't love you with a purpose for real. So when they get to certain aspects, like this is my shit with relationships. When you say shit like, um, she not a good mother or she not a good wife or she a high value man or that type of shit. That's the bullshit. I don't like you for nothing but, but your soul. And maybe I'm an alien. Maybe I'm just fucking lucky like that. But it's not what you do for me, what you don't do for me. And sometimes 
when you going through your inner shit, you might get to the reality like shit. Maybe it is that. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's, and you be kind of cycling through shit. But at the end of the day, when this is what it helped me realize what it came to is like what's motivating me why am i doing what i'm doing is because i'm gonna love you to the end and if i love you to the end then i can't then say well if you don't do this sis then i'm gonna have to not fuck with you because you know you ain't doing you ain't meeting the fucking criteria you ain't meeting my standards or nothing i think that's entirely unfair when you love somebody now if we just dating that's another thing. But when we committed, we got children together, we got business together. If I'm fucked up, I might be so fucked up that you don't even know me no more. I don't know what you going to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, but that's how I felt. Because yeah. I know I didn't like... So you don't know yourself. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, you just like, want somebody that's going to at least drive me to the mental institution or yep. something like down the hold you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. I don't necessarily know I just know that my spirit was saying two things put one foot in front of the other and something is better than nothing so always move forward and always do something spiritual in the space of your darkest hours mm-hmm. If you got a candle, light a candle. If you got incense, burn incense. But sometimes we struggle emotionally, we struggle mentally, and we don't even fight back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those things that it's like no matter what you believe in, Mm -hmm. no matter Mm -hmm. who it is you pray to, Mm -hmm. that's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, that's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Yep, take your ass to the fucking reverend. Yep, that is Mm -hmm. like... That, that is what you need Open to up do. your Bible, something. Yep, yep. Uh, build you or get you a prayer room, mm-hmm. or whatever they call that. Uh, a meditation room. Uh, if you're a Buddhist or some yep, shit like whatever, that. Whatever it is that your belief, your culture, your spiritual background, whatever your bag is, mm-hmm. get in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and stay in that no matter no matter what. And yeah. it's like, definitely if you and your partner are in that together, y'all need to do that shit together. Mm-hmm. Um, because it definitely, like, at the end of the day, it definitely is an elevation once you get on the other side. Mm-hmm. Because you don't come out, you're not the same. Mm-hmm. Um, what does that look like and feel like? I don't know. I can't I can't say. Okay. Because I'm, I'm not on the other side yet. I, in, in all honesty, I'm not on the other side yet. That's but real. I can say that the feeling of moving forward and knowing that mm-hmm. there is an other side is definitely a peaceful, reassuring feeling. Um, and it's a feeling that I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's like the biggest thing is knowing that you're not alone. Let me ask this. Do you feel comfortable in speaking your truth, whether positive or negative, within your relationship without being judged? Yes. Do you find that to be valuable? Yes, very, very, very valuable. Um, and what if I bought you a diamond ring instead of giving? What if I gave you a diamond ring? I will lose that bitch <laughs> the first day, and not even gonna hold you up. <laughs> so you gonna lose my diamond ring and not take this and not take the non-judgmental support? Would you take non-judgmental support or a diamond ring? I want non-judgmental. Because most women would take a diamond ring and be criticized and scrutinized for it. But I digress. I got a ring that had a nice little amethyst in it. I don't know where it is. You don't know where it's at. (laughs) Oh, Lord. And the other one, John took the, or broke the stone out of it or something. Some John did something with the stone. So, no, I don't, uh -uh, I don't, no, that's not me. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, give me the support. Mm -hmm. Give me, give me that. So, I mean, it's so funny because some women is listening to this live like, what, bitch? You better take that fucking ring. And you know, I'm talking about 1.5 carats or I don't even know if that's some hot shit. If that ain't no hot shit, 3.5. If that ain't no hot shit, 8.5. I'm talking about the biggest ring out the, the, the goddamn the jewelry is, though, store. Is that when, a person, when, a woman, when a mother is going through postpartum, mm-hmm. it's 
psychosis, postpartum psychosis, postpartum obsessive compulsive disorder, mm -hmm. or just postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. She can every you can buy her, have bought her twenty houses, mm -hmm. give her a million dollars every week, mm -hmm. give her enough diamond rings for every finger to wear on five finger, uh, five finger to wear uh, rings on every finger, like mm -hmm. five fingers on every ring. Or every yeah, yeah, ring, yeah, five, and, and double it up. Yeah. Look alike, yeah, yeah, go. slick Rick and shit. Yeah, just drip her everything, mm -hmm. buy her all, give her everything she will ever want. Mm -hmm. If she's going through any of that, mm -hmm. all that shit's going out the motherfucker. It don't matter. It does not matter. So imagine what the man then feels like, not knowing what's going on. He like shit. I buy her rings. I buy her diamonds. I buy her ring diamonds. I buy her diamond rings. She still ain't happy. You ever heard that type of shit before? Mm -hmm. Oh wow, this is deep. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. And it's to like, me. And it's not. It has nothing to do with you. And right. What you're doing. And exactly. What you're her is literally what's going on inside of her, and she's living this reality, and she, there's no one there to snap her out. I ain't gonna cap. That's what made me mad, cause I felt like, I felt like. You was treating me like I was a cheater. Like, this is what cheater niggas go through and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I thought that in my mindset, I felt like if I act a certain type of way, like boom, bam, 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 boom, bam, boom, bam, boom, right? Like that, then you shouldn't be mad or go through nothing, right? And I was like, and I was like physically, and it was even more frustrating. It was getting me into more other spaces because like, you just don't understand it has nothing to do. Right. I can't conceptualize that because I thought boom, bam, and bam, bam was enough to have you smiling from ear to ear every time. And then I try to do like, I was trying to like sex it out of you. <laughs> that ain't work. And I think that kind of made me more angry. <laughs> right. Because that's something that I truly uh-huh um and it's like i'm in this dark space uh -huh. i can't it's like i can't really enjoy it how i want to uh, and it's like i and it's like trying to give you the valentine's day squirt fest sis like damn that wasn't even like no <laughs> <laughs> yeah we nasty nasty uh, i tried to get it i tried to fuck it up you feel me like damn but no it's cool though because generally that ain't gonna solve it either like holding the space to identify like I, I don't know something about the identification process it just soothes my logic side and i think like within this all in this emotional game that's cool and i'm willing to play that and I can understand that emotional game that I need to play if I got some sense of logic mm -hmm. surrounding it. And when you told me this morning, like the conversation that we had this morning, I'm just like, okay, that makes sense to me. Now I know, like, if I'm in a point of trying to prove a point, but it's going to upset you, I got to understand that my point don't matter. I want to be with you forever. So generally, if I'm, what's the point of like, at the end of the day, I want to be with you forever. So if you wake up today and say, you know what, I'm thinking about being Ronald McDonald full time. I got to be like, okay, <laughs> sis, I got to be supporting you as Ronald McDonald the clown, like working uh -huh. motherfucking part time shifts, you know, hi kids, how you doing? Do you want a happy meal? Like I have to really just support you in that, you know what I'm saying? And love you through that. And mm -hmm. Maybe you like it don't matter is basically what I'm saying. I'm making a decision to love you regardless, but within that it's not going to be all roses, but actually maybe some thorns. Maybe some thorns, you know it might that's be roses. Makes, yeah. That's what makes the roses, but a like fact. But you me. can't just look yeah, that's exactly. You can't, you can't take the roses without the thorns. No. Nah. Cut them at the very root, but then I mean very tip. Fuck it all that. Yeah, fuck all that. You know, I like I like the whole shebang. I like you know, I like the, yeah, that's fucking crazy to me, man. That's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it, but it's beautiful crazy. Like, it's just like it's different. Like, say for instance, you go through a dark energy or a dark time. 
and you like um we just get on this live and we just start just going crazy about the white man or something <laughs> like like or I sit here all fucked up in the head just just mad you know what I'm saying and but we can't even come to grips about our own psychosis and our own lack of support uh, like me it's not to say I pride myself but it's, it's necessary that you have a stable emotional life mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like I, it ain't like I pride myself on it it's just like shit that's gonna be like shit I've been fucking with this dude for six years he ain't never bought me a dinner before he ain't never looked after me or for shit people would be like well why is you with him sis so I look at that the same way as like being internally happy. If you can't just be like, well, I'm in this relationship and not that I'm always happy with you, but when I'm not in my happiest moments, that's when you shame me. That's when you come at my throat. That's when you make me feel bad for how I'm feeling and thus creates more of a negative feedback loop and I don't know what it's like to be in a relationship and not be emotionally. Let me, let me, I just don't, basically, we, I feel like I've been in this relationship with you forever. I don't even remember nothing before you or nothing after you, for real, for real. So, it just like, I don't know what it's like to not be emotionally supporting in my relationship and vice versa. Yeah. But I do know that what we got is like abnormal. We talking straight up alien language for real for real if you wanted to be honest because most of the time people are able to have a hard conversation without being judged no and i'd be like you crazy that's the worst that's the what the that's the most derogatory shit in the world you crazy if somebody you love is telling you how you feel how they feel you know what i mean yep yep it's like i don't know if if you would have said that like what i would have done yeah, that probably would have broke you, honestly. Like, what you talking about? You want some crazy shit. Like, I would have been broken. Like, if anything I would have said in this time, you might have said, like, I don't know what you talk about. Or make it, explain it to me to where I can get it. But if you just broke off into, here you go with this crazy shit again, I will be fucking crushed. And I will be looking like, well, look, like, what the fuck? Like, I guess mental support is like when you're in a relationship you can one day just wake up and just be like and crush everything you know what i'm saying like just crush it like yeah this nigga really blah 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 and they're like damn damn i really trusted you on that Uh, mental uh shit uh uh so whatever you go through you gotta yeah i feel like sometimes that's what happens though because people don't understand what's yeah, that's yeah, that's really the crux of it all. Cause the shit that we're like, we're so happy we're in this direction and we love each other for this. Most motherfuckers is listening to this like, good for y'all, motherfucker. Clap, clap, clap for you, bitch. Like, suck my. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know nothing about that. Cause this nigga is crazy or she's crazy, right? And just being really judgmental to people that you got a real life soul tie. <laughs> to in the end, yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. He didn't want to um shift down all the way to one and kind of gear up. Yeah, cause that be that bullshit. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah, I guess some people, you know, mother of the year and shit, you know, no, fucking no. breast. But you know, I mean, some I some mom, no, some moms get it, got it all figured out. No, I'm being, I'm being facetious. Oh. Let me get this joke off real quick. Uh, <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying. You know, juggling and and struggling and juggling and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, man, I'm here for. I think we hold space for people who don't got it all all the way figured out. That's not all the way 100%. That's generally in situations with children or in relationships. And I like like couples at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what we are, right? I, lo- I would love it if 
people got with their bay and listened and figured out ways to love each other deeply. I love when men respond like, you know, listen to your channel, help me with my wife and connect to my wife and help me with my children and things like that. Like at the end of the day, because what I'm saying is we're not all the way there yet. We're just trying to perpetually be in that direction and be with people who are perpetually in that direction of healing, of in that direction of maybe I ain't have all of the top notch guidance. And even if I had it, I was too deep in my darkness to even recognize it. So generally I'm in this space of awakeness mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this is what it looked like being able to identify what's going on with my wife so we can move on to healing. And this is a beautiful place to be because before this actual place, I was petitioning my ancestors. I was really figure. I was really like, you know, going through a lot mentally and not me personally, but it's just, it's not me personally. I say me, but understand when I say me, it's always we. That's how it is. It's me and my wife, right? So in the space of why is this happening? Because generally, I don't really understand negative situations all the way like that. Even though I have them, I don't always understand them. But then when they occur, it's like tasting blood if you're a fighter or something. It's like, ah, okay. You know, you charge your ancestors up again. You know, you get that fire going and you're like, okay, we here to heal. We always here to heal. And then I'm like, okay, that's why I do what I do. Because I'm always calling on my ancestors. I'm always in that space and that mindset as opposed to a person that's just like counting his money all the fucking time. You know what I'm saying? And living a good life and, you know, stunting on motherfuckers. It's more of a mindset of just healing constantly. And generally, I say that to say, I'm just happy that we could be having this conversation today. No matter where we're at, A, you might say we got a long way to go, which is true, but I can identify an issue. And I don't know, you ever, you know, when you go into the doctors and you trying to get like a prognosis on something and they like, uh, ma'am, I don't know what's going on with you. It's just some rare different shit. And then you just going home. You don't really feel good. And then you get a call like, Brrr. that's how it felt this morning. He was like, well, I was looking online and I found this and I found that and I found this. And it was like a prognosis that you could speak to. And then you can find situations that was more severe than you. You can find situations that was less severe than you. And you can just find yourself in the prognosis and working through it in the healing. And then ultimately the solution of just kind of holding that space for other mothers mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. same way that you already doing with the happy hour just kind of like you literally call it happy hour as a space like your spirit and your soul is just speaking to you in multiple different ways it's mm -hmm. just being completely aware and even when we were saying like i was like your gifts are awakening and you're like i don't feel like i have any gifts hopefully you don't feel that way now hopefully you feel like maybe they're not fully yeah, but you can see that you do have gifts and you do have purpose and you do have an audience and you generally have to experience it at the end of the day. So experience the downfalls, the pitfalls, the healing, the education, the administration and the overall lifestyle of healing the wound in a spiritual way, a scientific way. And I think that is just your expression for your crown chakra activation. And I think we have different ways of expressing it and showing it, but ultimately your 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 struggle is not your struggle alone. Like, I don't know, you may feel like it's your struggle alone. At, at some point, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But. but it's not though, you know, mm -hmm. I feel, I don't feel what you feel, but I feel to a certain degree, let's just say that. And if you're not in a space where you're like, I'm not going to be the type of person that be like, well, all right, y'all, 
Your mom is not feeling well. We about to go kick it. Bye, mom. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't that type of energy. I got to figure out my world stop for you. You know what I'm saying? So generally, if you're not in a space where you are 1,000 and 50,000 percent, then I'm going to hold that for you. But generally, if I'm not that way too, hopefully is the hopefully you will be there for me. But if not, shit, I don't know. But, but that, that, <laughs> that, that's how it like. I think that's how it has to be. Yeah. You know what I'm and saying? I don't like the word use the word has. To, yeah, but, but I'm just is. saying. Uh, there's going to be times when it's going to be an 80 20 or mm -hmm. 20 80 or mm -hmm. then there's going to be times when it's 50 50. Right. right. In different areas too. Yep. So, say for instance, you got the kids, and maybe some days it's ninety it's like, ten. For example, yesterday mm -hmm. it was pretty much you were pulling everything. Um, to be quite honest, <laughs> mm -hmm. but and then on Saturday you have your class, mm -hmm. so I'm going to have the kids. Mm. But no matter what it is we're doing. Someone is always picking up. Whatever. Yeah, sometimes you got to pick up the slack for your partner. But I think, say for instance, if you had a goal or a dream or a vision or anything that you wanted to do, but you had children, right? You then want to be like, shit, the ladies is having a dinner, but I can't go because I don't got a babysitter or nothing like that. You generally want to go to the dinners with the ladies, whether you got kids or not. So it's not like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you want to be in a healthy relationship, right? At the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But then you want to also have a positive mental and emotional health to sustain that. But if you're not able to identify what's going on within your mind or in your emotions, when shit happen or trigger. Mm -hmm. Then it's fuck the relationship. I can go take your ass to court or I can, you know, whatever. You know how evil and vitriol picture people get when it's time, when it's when it's like, well fuck you then. Fuck you then. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you feel if you hurt or you feel like I'm a good dude, I don't cheat on her. Or you know the 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 most evil shit, bro. I'ma tell you the most evilest shit in the world. I could get somebody else. You know, that's the most evilest shit in the world. Because, yeah, you probably could. But if you're not identifying the issue that somebody having with somebody that you love, then you might be for real, for real, jumping the gun. Yeah, and making the situation worse. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what usually happen, bro, you get with somebody else, they go through the same shit. And why? Because... Because you got her pregnant. But if you don't really like her like that, then you be like, well, nah. Do you tripping. Again. No, she tripping. You know, mm -hmm. she slashed mm -hmm. my tires or she broke my windows or something. But it's like. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely not an excuse. It's not an excuse. But it's saying that y'all can come to some sort of solution together. And I ain't saying, ladies, just start smashing cars and we gonna understand it. I'm saying that. I guess I'm saying that the the amount of communication that needs to take place after you have a child with a woman and when she have emotional bouts or things of that nature, especially my guy, if you ain't doing shit for the kids, you having her take care of the kids completely responsibility, not giving her no break, not just giving her constant authority over these children and you're like responsible for them yeah 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 you understand mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. i don't know maybe you don't know this person and you don't feel mm -hmm. obligated to this person and you got purpose and things of that nature and you're like well fuck it and you don't have no remorse in that then i guess whatever i feel like this though that Go person ahead. can be the mother to your son's wife your son's future wife or your son, or your daughter right it could be the person that yeah. kills you one day because he don't got no fucking father figure yeah it could like so somehow i feel like somehow we are all connected and i 
feel like it's up, it's up for us to take some of the responsibility where others are lacking. Um, but I think because we don't have that mentality, that's what's wrong with a lot of our society. Um, we don't have the it takes a village mindset. We don't have no space. Listen, this is how fucked up it is, right? This is what we have to actually know that these types of things might happen and could happen. We have what they call women's shelters, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. battered women's shelters, or when the woman takes the family and runs away with the with the children because they unsafe and things of that nature, right? And sometimes it could be the fact that all this stuff is an illusion going on inside her head. And she needs help. Seeing so many different things that we might as well not say nothing, right? Mm -hmm. But yep, it's a, it could be. It's so yep. many different ways that that shit can actually play, but no it's always for. after the fact. Mm -hmm. No one will be looking for a postpartum. Nope. Um, there's no postpartum test in the women's shelter where you walk in and make sure that you getting your mental and emotional health putting together. It's only the result of. You possibly, I'm a tread lightly, because generally you might be, let's just say 99% of violence is just a bad man, but maybe a point percent of violence that may occur is based upon I can only say in a situation that I know to be a fact where I'm talking to a person and she's like, I don't even know why I did that to him. He's a good guy. I know he's a good guy, but he didn't hit me, but I was just in his ass because I was just feeling that way one day. And he was just, I was wrong for it, but I knew I could go where I could go and get the help that I could get. So I took full advantage of it. And now that I think about it, I feel bad about it. What should I do about it? You definitely can't get no reading from me. I said, I'll call you later. I'll call you back. Because generally, I'm just like, well, shit. I'm not that type of person where I'm trying to right wrongs or shit like that. I'm just trying to deal with the energy and shit like that. And sometimes when I understand the energy, I can't even speak to shit. So at that present time where I was hearing it, I was I was thinking more or less like this is fucked up, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then now I'm thinking about it. She very well could have been going through postpartum because she did just have like a five month old or some shit like that, a mm -hmm. little baby. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, if you was to have a baby and you just kind of out here, like I think one of the things you could do is the like placenta i heard like taking the placenta pills is good for postpartum so that would be a solution like because this placenta is like where all your energy and shit is at and if you don't actually take care of it then you know and in that situation it was just like my bad i fucked that up you know what i'm saying so just like i don't know man it's so much that goes into the biology that it might probably be the most important thing in the world to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I like, think it is, especially for mothers. Yeah, to uh, get those yeah, pills they, capsulated. Yep, yeah. and it's like even if even if you are a surrogate or you mm -hmm. choose not to keep your child, mm -hmm. you still like I feel like it's still, um, or even if you have a miscarriage, mm -hmm. it's still something that. We definitely need to um, take, give more care to, give more thought to, mm -hmm. give more attention to. Because mm -hmm. um, it's only going to make the relationship better. Yes, yes. Especially if you love yes. somebody and you don't want to leave them and they act in a way that you don't really understand. Or you act in a way that you suppress it and you don't really understand it. Because generally, you know, people will say journal. But sometimes journaling don't even cut it. Don't leave your forehead alone. 
sometimes you need to talk about it. Yep, yep, because I'm telling you, like, past couple weeks, burnt herbs, mm -hmm. uh, bath here and there, like a spiritual bath, like, mm -hmm. I steam, like, burning my candles, uh, uh, meditation, and it's like, that was not cutting me. And it was like, at the time, you know, we would have conversations, and those conversations would make me feel worse, and then I feel like, you kind of took that um, and um, it kind of made you probably made you feel a certain way because you're like I'm only telling you how I feel mm. and not trying to make you upset or whatever mm. but it was like that's not what it is that's making me upset and so it could have literally spiraled out of control mm. um, all because um, I can't even I can't even pinpoint all because of what? I mean, I don't know. I think it's like when you reference healing or Chiron or anything in reference to aiding your spiritual journey, you always deal with the negative energy first mm -hmm, as mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. as an onset, and then you provide a solution for the negativity. And then if you're able to provide a, 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 a solvent solution, then you actually move into like creating a business, whether it's like um so when i say create a business people are like yeah but you can do a support group you generally want to do things that actually are real and they can put respect on your name because generally like the more that you assert yourself in business the easier it is for people to find you and that's going to allow for more people to be healed so generally, if I wanted to start a business, like a new accountant or whatever, and the reason why I wanted to do people's taxes is because I could get them the most amount of money. Now, if I just say, I don't want to really start no business and do it, but you know what I'm saying? I just kind of, but I want to do as many tax people as I can, but I don't do a business. At a certain point, the rubber is going to meet the road and it's going to be fucked up for me because I'm going to be like, well, the IRS gonna come like why you was doing all of these taxes you don't got no business you don't got no paper trail you're just out here so in reference to what like I say we driving and we doing our offerings and things of that nature but I'm sure we passed around at least a hundred people that could have actually benefited from this conversation just in the cars that have been driving by us now just because we you know spitting and you know hollering and you know shooting the shit and bicking back and being bull and things like that that's cool but I find that this is a real serious conversation that you have to kind of get in front of and stand in front of and whether it takes you five years to stand in it your absolute truth through your support group right you know what i'm saying you don't gotta fucking get an llc right away you don't gotta do anything this is how you do market research by getting people who are actually going through it and trying to figure out well how can i help you you know how can i help you how can i help you how can i help you now if you want to do that for your own fucking self-esteem then go ahead and waste your time and energy. But if you want to do that with proper energy exchange, because at the end of the day, if you extend yourself, right, without getting nothing in return, you might be right back into the situation that you're trying to help people mm -hmm, from. Mm -hmm, so generally, mm -hmm. you stand the whole space and people going to be like, ooh, Chauncey, let me buy a bag of that, but give it to me for free. And you got the sweetest heart in the world. you like, sis, here you go for free. And she like, ooh, I'm going to tell my friend. You know what I'm saying? And you like, oh, sis. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. And then by the end of the day, motherfuckers is going to be like, Ooh, Chauncey, you just the best motherfucker in the world. And I don't care if your kids ain't hurt, not sis, you know what I'm saying? But you for sure helped me to feed my kids and feed my baby daddy tonight. Thumbs up on this, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, we don't live for likes. We live for our tykes. Like we got to make it out here in these streets. And generally... You would fully, fully, fully <laughs> understand, like, everything that you've been working towards for, like, this past two years. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. just in writing your book, reading your books, studying the womb, the court. Like, how many courses that you done took? You got three, you got about two certificates, 
about to get your third certificate. Mm -hmm. Working on the book. Three and four certificates. Three to four certificates. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you... I'm not saying that you just woke up today and said, all right, I'm going to decide I'm about to heal these girls out here. You've actually been making it your life's work, but this actual part of it is going to be the actual thing that you know. Yeah, because it's more or less of we out the realms of medical, we out the realms of spiritual, we in the realm of goddessness and how to live in your goddesshood is not to feel defeated before you even show up you know what i'm saying because your mind take you out of it right your ability to hold space and show support um for these babies and for these families because it my thing is it ain't about a motherfucker being a single mom at the end of the day a lot of you gr girls that send full-fledged marriages with good ass dudes can actually benefit from this shit too at the end of the day because it ain't about it ain't no stigma attached to what you are actually speaking to mm -mm, mm -mm. it's just real it's in just the good. field yep yep i'm just excited yep. for you like i've always been excited for you but i know your saturn return is saturn returning you feel me and <laughs> that's just you know it's going to be rough because i i'm 36 you 31 so generally and the, and the funny thing is, is that we got together when you were my age. Exactly. Finishing my Saturn to return. Yep, at the end of it. Yep. yep, at the very end of it. And now you reaching your end of your Saturn return is more or less you know exactly how you want to move forward with your life. And now making the steps. And we're not saying tomorrow you're going to come out with a healing course for postpartum. But you can say, when I'm ready, whenever that is, it's going to be what it's going to be. And I know every day what I'm waking up and doing. I'm working towards actually speaking to this and healing this. And my sister's out here. Because that's where my heart is at. That's where my soul is leading me to. That's where my ancestors lead me to. You ain't know that nobody was going to sign up for your happy hours. Now you got people telling people, people telling people, and they all generally trying to figure out how to become happy at the end of the day. And I know you hold the keys to that, but you generally got to find the key within yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Find the key to yourself, unlock it in yourself, find the key to true happiness as divine feminine, and that's healing that wound in the space of understanding your depression and how it shows up yep. and how you're going to need support during these actual circumstances because you can't do this shit alone no, I can't. I can't. and it, i mean i think a lot of people showed up for you yesterday in reference to your ancestors your mom myself mm -hmm. your dad so it's just like mm -hmm. i don't know you just gotta Sometimes you got to cry out for help. That's the most powerful thing as a divine feminine. But then a lot of y'all, like I used to, I'm going to revert to my um, city slicker days. And, you know, girls would come like, I'm the baddest chick. I'm the baddest chick. And they wouldn't never get no money. And I'll be whispering to my girl or whatever, do the damsel in distress role. Do the damsel in distress. Be the damsel in distress. You will always fare better. And one day she asked me, like, why you always tell me be the damsel in distress? So I was like, dudes like to Come in and save, save be, the, be the captain save a hoe. They might not say it, but oh my God, they really do like, love it and embody it. This dude making a million dollars off it. Never mind. People be listening. Um, I say fuck it, let me say it. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's me getting into my dark side. Yeah, that's, yeah. And that's another thing for me, like, side note. Mm -hmm. Well, major being, note, major note. Being, like, I, I don't know how dark I can get, but I'm scared to go there. And I'm scared of what can happen if I go there. But see, like, that's that that's that BS though, because your, mat, your dark side is like, how you change this yeah. bitch. We in the fucking yeah. We in the motherfucking where we want to live at tomorrow. We we out of here, sis. We ain't got them. What what are we gonna do today? Oh my goodness! See, but but that's what you do. All you do that already that's, though. That's another thing that I gotta like when I think of dark. Like I I really go dark in a negative space. 
Mm -hmm. I need to think of it and know like it. Like which your hours? Yes. <laughs> Instead of like, oh, I'm about to take this motherfucker head. Clean the fuck off. Cause, cause what if, you know, what would be the powerful energy that you can try to do? This is going to take some training, but actually incite it within yourself but always think of it like some magic shit. I don't know, like, if you get on your period or something, get in front of a bonfire and start just yeah. rubbing your blood all over you and just kind of do an ecstatic rage and then fucking, like, charge a sigil uh -huh. with an intention. But don't really think about what you're trying to charge your intention. Like, so what's this is the quarter moon, so... Do the do the intention and sigil now. Okay. So by the time the full moon come, hopefully right. you don't forgot about what the sigil mean. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then when the full moon come, you get into a ecstatic trance because your period aligned with the full moon. Uh -huh. So you get into an ecstatic trance and you charge that sigil with your period energy, your period blood, and your ancestors too, because your ancestors live in your period blood and that's where they try to suppress us the most and they suppress us with the tampons the tampons the playtex mm -hmm. so forth and so the always always going to be poison in your womb so you generally rid yourselves of those particular energies which you have for years now like your womb probably you could fucking probably feed some homeless kids right now. They <laughs> squeeze a little bit of that juice out. And you're like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I feel good now, you know. And, uh, <laughs> I feel strong. <laughs> no, <laughs> but no. But I'm saying, like that dark energy. What if you don't suppress it? What if you don't stop it, but you rearrange it and redirect it? Like I say, it might be. You see that sign? It said where the magic happens. Um, but yeah, it might just be the kind of vibrations that you need to take that forceful energy uh -huh. where it's like the reason that I'm afraid of it because it's so real, right? Yeah. Got me? Yeah. yeah. What if you take it like I'm afraid to do positive stuff because it might, you know, really have me in the bubble eye bins out here in this bitch. I might be really that motherfucking nigga in that bitch out here. You know what I'm saying? Niggas will, like, come through. Must be really be throwing rose petals at my feet or something. Not saying that no, you want, but... Not, not no, the other one. That's cool. Oh, cutter, cutter, cutter. cutter. Um, no, crack, crack, crack burger. Well, gotcha. All you had to say, the, the place where they sprinkle the crack and the stuff. And I'll be like, yeah. But I know exactly where you're talking about. The trap house. Got you. Say less. No, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shit serious out here, to be quite honest. Yeah, and I think Mercury Retrograde is actually... I think that's why people is I can sense a collective darkness with energy. I could just tell how business be, how just people just be like out and about and things like that. That Mercury retrograde is really that part where it really ch checks you in that department. So what in my question, maybe you have an answer, maybe you don't have an answer. But what do you think you can do to lessen the severity of the symptoms of postpartum? Like I said, it might be an answer for this, it might not be an answer. But for somebody who listening, who is like, ah! and they're like, sis, chill, fuck you, you chill. What would you say? Go through that. Okay, what does that look like? Whatever that just was. Uh-huh. Uh, just let it go. Just let it loose. Yeah, and especially if you have somebody who is holding the space for you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then once you come down, then start making an action plan. A care action plan. About Can you speak to that? Because I think that's a powerful... Well, a care action plan? Yeah, that's powerful. So... 
for example, me. I am Can you do one, I'm sorry, one with a partner and one without a partner if possible? For without, I'll try my best. Okay, Because I okay. don't really know, I can't honestly speak on with that person. I should. Um, but you yesterday started burning her. Uh -huh. um, then I decided that, and we talked about how when I'm at my peak of peacefulness, I'm creating something, whether mm -hmm. it's drawing, painting, whatever, I'm just creating something. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, some coloring pages for me to start coloring. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also like, now, you know, we talked about some other ideas that we're going to start doing. Um, I'm going to go to Woodward and then I'm going to cut back down. Okay. Some other things that we're doing. So, it's just, and then it's like, in the beginning, your partner might need to like be like, baby, did you do such and such today? Mm -hmm. All right, well, you know, come on, let's go ahead and get to it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And really, and some days will be easier than others. Uh, but once, I feel like once you make it a habit, after two, three weeks, it gets a lot easier. So would you say like, if, do you find this to be sufficient? Hey babe, how you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. <laughs> no, I, like, that's why I think having like, care, like, care action plan um, to where you write down these things and you can add and take away as mm -hmm. soon as you, you know, as you see fit. Mm -hmm. But having that and, and being accountable for that and sticking to that um, mm -hmm. because, hey, how you doing, does not cut it. No, it don't. I just said that being funny because motherfuckers swear they care about you. Hey, babe, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. Motherfuckers are really pat themselves on the back on some shit. Like, I care about my girl shit. Yeah. I asked her how she was doing yesterday. She said she was good, nigga. Can't tell me I don't be in tune with my, my, my divine feminine. Uh -huh. <laughs> Niggas be really feeling themselves, too. Because generally... I think that we can lie to ourselves or lie to our partners in the space of, yeah, I'm doing good because maybe we don't want to deal with, depending if your partner is not supportive to what you're going through, right? If he's not supportive or she's not supportive of what you're going through and you say, I'm going through this and they look at you with like three different eyes, but not the good kind and don't give you that support that you need, then you're not even going to give them that energy again. And then even deeper, if you ask the question, oh, how you doing? They're going to be like, whatever. You don't really care anyway. So in my my humble opinion or my humble question to you is how do you find relationships? Once again, you might know this, you might not know this, but this be on my heart to ask. How do you either support or promote or even find? a man that's willing to stand in the storm with you emotionally because I don't even know how you like I feel like you be actually doing something like you did something I don't, I don't know if you know what I mean because I know you're going to be like I ain't do shit nigga I was just fucking bicking back being bull smoking my blood living my life my best life and I mean, then you showed up step, step out of my comfort zone but that ain't going to guarantee that you're going to get with an emotional, yeah. compatible not, person. I mean, I stepped out of my comfort zone and I was raw and transparent. All right. Do you know what you was thinking when you stepped out your comfort zone? Did you just think like, no. it looked like he can um, no, I, eat, the, eat, the, eat the skin off of my... <laughs> <laughs> Is John asleep? Okay, he do look he like he be smashing on watermelon. No, I like this place better than Starbucks. Oh, uh, what you call it? Yeah, I, okay. Myers. Um, yep. I know that, but that's the thing. I had no expectations, no foresight. I literally was just, and this is crazy, I'm saying this, but I'm really just not thinking about this. Mm -hmm. um, I really was just enjoying every conversation with you um, and every time that we spent together. So it was like no expectations, no where is this going, no nothing. It was just like it do feel like you be supporting me to be emotionally supportive, like you have an instinct or you could give women some advice to attract 
an emotionally sensitive because i feel like you got a lot of good men in your life for real for real like even from like not even like your mom dad i mean your daddy your brother which is cool but like your uncles and like i don't know it just seems as though it's a secret to just being attracting emotionally centered men that's not bitches to think, say but just really in tune with the divine feminine and some I think aspect. seeing a certain level of respect that like okay my, okay that my mother gave my father or and even gives my father or my back aunt, and forth yeah that my aunt gives my uncle and and so on and so forth that's kind of um, the model yeah and you don't be seeing niggas like fuck you you bitch ass nigga yeah like there was never kiss no, my ass like, you bitch there was never no talk like that like those are my, the first time I started hearing talk like that was um with your friends or? yeah that it probably looked when I used to watch Love and Hip Hop uh -huh, like uh -huh. back when that first came on I was like damn people really talk like this uh -huh. and then I've seen like some of my friends have arguments with their boyfriends and I'm like is that name calling really necessary? Is it really meant for you to like? Are you supposed to say those things? Like, mm -hmm. like you like, was thinking is, like, are you doing something wrong by being a sweet person? No, I no, no. Because I I I couldn't fathom that somebody could make you this angry that you can really talk to them in that sort of manner. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter what they did, that mm -hmm. you can like literally talk to a person like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I remember I had a friend who just, I mean, all type, he was all types of stuff, and they wasn't even together at the time. And I'm just like, you feel like, you feel shitty after that conversation, and it's like, it's not even worth it. I'm like, so what, he doesn't take care of his kid. Mm -hmm. It's going to be his loss at the end of the day. There's no need for you to sit there and call him a whole bunch of names and stuff like that. Like, no matter what we go through, I could never sit there and call you out of your name or demean you or belittle you um and i don't honestly think i can do that to anybody mm -hmm. um, but that's just that's just me you good I mean, you good i'll sit there i'll cut you the fuck out, out I'll, 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 no best thing i'll cut you the fuck out and then i'll cook you a meal <laughs> we can smoke a blunt together and i'll cook you a meal that's that's just how it I'll be right back. um i'm gonna count to three and you need to get in your seat get your, um, you need to keep your hands to yourself can I get the <laughs> Mm. Azor, number one, you had no business on going back there. Nope, put the tears away. Cause should you have taken your seatbelt off? I don't even know what happened to that. I said I'm coming right back. I don't even know what happened to the no, thing. No, no. Um, Azor, Azor, are you his father? Are you sitting on his it? mother? No. Are you an adult? I thought so. Okay. There was no need for you to go back there. Do you understand me? Do you understand? Karma met you really fast. You said what? Karma. What is it? Karma? Karma means that if you do something and you're not supposed to do it, something's going to come back to you and it's normally bad, i.e. your brother punching you in the face. So let's put our seatbelt back on. And unless me or daddy asks you for help, we don't need you to get it because stuff like this happens, okay? Seven. I need you to leave John in the phone alone. If you want to look, that is fine. Okay? You can look. That's fine. If he's going to share with you, that's fine. You can look, Sammy. You don't have to sit there and cry. Seriously? Do you not want to look at the phone? I have no idea of what you're talking about, so I'm not even going to. Um... Okay, well, when we get home, you can watch the egg movie. Or maybe when we get home, we could take a nap because obviously we need to restart. If we don't want to restart, if we don't want to take a nap, then we need to take some deep breaths and collect ourselves. Because this behavior is not okay. Wipe your face, please. And y'all know this behavior is not okay. Dang, I meant to ask him to give me a chai tea, and he didn't take my phone in. That's what happens when the kids will throw you off. These two will start fighting like cats and dogs. 
playing like cats and dogs. That was Mark. And I don't even know what we was talking about before you even got out the car. Oh, I was talking about belittling and calling names. And yeah, I can't do that. Uh, Can't do that. Let me see. These comments. <laughs> yeah, sure, I don't do no voodoo. <laughs> I don't. That's like, I don't. I don't know. I think, like I was telling him, it's just the level of respect that I saw. And. I might not saw like exactly how I need to be and that's things that I need to teach myself and that I need to learn but I saw the level of respect you have for the person you are to you are with um, and there was no name calling in my house unless it was like a funny name or joking and even then it wasn't in maliciousness um, like not me and my brother would go at it but I feel like sibling that's a little that's different that's you and your sibling are supposed to fight. Like that's the, that's how you learn how to fight. That's how you learn how to defend yourself is from your siblings. That's my personal opinion. Um, but at this age right here, I think they're too young to start that. Um, and plus, defend themselves from, I mean, anyways. Um, so yeah. It, John, can you turn that down, please? Thank you. Um, oh yeah, our kids got some. It's funny, Azora Seven, they have the unique names. Jesse and John and Jesse are like average <laughs> old names. <laughs> Thank you. I was meaning to tell you to grab me a chai, um, but messing with them and I didn't want it. You know how the girl was going to get. Mm -hmm. But it's sorry, right. I didn't need one. <laughs> yeah, like I'm a smart ass. I feel like we all can be a smart ass and sarcastic, but the whole kind of sending and trying to belittle somebody. And it's like, what is your purpose in doing that? Yes, seven. Oh, that should have get you wiped up. Oh yeah, I, she, she. Once I found the girl that didn't feel well, like she could. Um, okay. Oh, can we stop at? Sorry, can we stop at the corner, uh, Mr. Kebab, to get some of those? Did you want to go to Cookie Cutter? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Sorry, I'm all over the place. What you gonna do? <laughs> I really want Mr. Cloud. <laughs> we'll Show you. Them, yeah, we'll get them something to drink. <laughs> Sorry, I'm all, I'm just all over the place. You got these, so you're covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ain't fucking with no motherfucking crack. crack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's best. It's best not. It's best not. We just niggas is on the live. Like, is they really on here talking about they really smoke crack? Like, that's oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he always stay ashy. I get it now. That's why he be smoking. He be smoking crack. I never. I knew it was something about that nigga. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. They gonna really go like proof uh -huh. that the hood mystic smokes crack. <laughs> and you know that video that you be watching? How they be like. Uh, uh, and then shit yeah, they, and then like they it. come in, or yeah, like it's two there. Like you could be like do a review, or motherfucking you talking about so much dank where they fucking edit it so much yeah. that a nigga be saying something completely, completely different. Crazy. And I'd be like, I smoke crack <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I smoke crack in front of my kids. <laughs> like you be like, damn, huh? you giving it up like that, like. No, they edited that shit, bro. I don't smoke crack. <laughs> like, I'm just joking. Like, and if, and if I did smoke crack, so what? But no, I don't smoke crack. It's just jokes. If it's not grown from the dirt on this earth. Nah, people say cocoa leaves is grown. 
I just don't do it. Yeah, I don't do amphetamines like um the oh, coca leaves. Oh, oh. You know, it's grown. So but you said. Hip to the oh, yeah, see. <laughs> I'm like, the coca leaves? What'd you do with the coca leaves? Smoke it? No, I mean, everything from the earth, like you said earlier, everything is based upon something natural. <laughs> yep. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I don't fuck around with the, with the coca. We talking about goddamn donuts that taste almost as good as crack. Yeah, like don't have any hooks. Like you would actually be like, what the fuck? Hold on a second. Am I high or is this donut really this good? Like, I don't know. Like, I never did crack, but I imagine that crack must have been like eating this fucking donut. But <laughs> that you fork feeling that it gives? Yeah, it's like. Because it's like a donut spot. Like, that's why I didn't go. Because it's like, I don't need that shit in my life. You feel uh -huh. me? Like, I don't need that. I don't need crack. You feel me? But uh -huh. I'm ruining a good ass talk. So, I generally. You gotta put, no, I gotta have some comedy. Gotta have some comedy. Because it, it needs to be like, yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, you gotta have like, some comedy relief. It can get real dark. God damn, this gonna be good. But I'm really in a space where we could actually grow this conversation mm -hmm. and really, mm -hmm. I, I want you to kind of reach out to people, reach into yourself and find the strength to heal and move towards healing and mm -hmm. hold the space mm -hmm. of healing. And um, I'm saying do real shit, even if it's one person. Even if it's two people, even if it's just yourself, just make sure that shit is real as fuck within uh -huh. your being uh -huh. because everybody else is doing shit for clout nowadays, yeah. trying to get the recognition, trying to get the followers and the subscribers, uh -huh. and ain't nobody actually being healed with something that they can diagnose. It's a bunch of shit of, I want a man, I want clothes, I want this, I want that. But it's like, do you want to heal your internals, yeah, I'm your emotions? Yeah, I'm trying to get my inner self together to even be worried about who's listening and mm -hmm. who's trying to follow. And right, who subscribed who, and yeah. all that. That's bullshit at the end of the day. But Unless you're saying the same shit that I said, then we might have a fucking problem. Uh -huh. People seem to do it around these parts. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go in to this grocery, to the store, <laughs> and get my kids something to drink. Mic drop. <laughs> yeah. No, 